Prepare to read. One plastic bag. Notice and note. Aha moment. Genre study. A biography is the story of a real person's life written by someone other than that person. Authors of biographies present events in sequential or chronological order. Biographies may tell how real people felt about events described in the text. Biographies include third-person pronouns such as he, she, him, her, his, hers, they, them, and their. Set a purpose. Critical vocabulary confesses, forage, recycled. Meet the author and illustrator, Miranda Paul and Elizabeth Zunon. Miranda Paul, the author of One Plastic Bag, also writes for newspapers, magazines, and game companies, and works with students of all ages. She likes to wear her pajamas when she's writing in her basement studio. It gives her the quiet spot she needs for writing because, as she says, my brain is a very noisy place. The artist and illustrator Elizabeth Zunan was born in Albany, New York, and she also lives there today. She spent a lot of her childhood in the sunny Ivory Coast, a country in West Africa where her grandfather had a cacao plantation. One plastic bag. Isa Tu Sise and the Recycling Women of the Gambia. Miranda Paul. Illustrations by Elizabeth Zunan. Njau, Gambia. Isa Tu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles, then two, then ten. The basket breaks. Isatu kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes softening her anger. It moves like a flag, flapping in the wind, and settles under a tamarind tree. Isatu slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Four goats greet Isatu as Grandmother Mbamba emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before this rain soaks your beautiful Mbuba! Isatu scurries in, and Grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isatu confesses. But I found this! Plastic, Grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. Confesses. If someone confesses something, he or she admits to doing or saying something wrong. Day after day, Isatu watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water and wanjo from tiny holes poked in clear bags. Market trays fill with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. Isa too shakes sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by, and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. 
There's nowhere else to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then ten, then a hundred. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path, and the thought floats away. Years pass, and Issa too grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her, until the ugliness finds its way to her. Issa too hears a goat crying and hurries towards grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides, and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother Mbombe's powerful shoulders sag. Isatu must be strong and do something. But what? Isatu's feet lead her to the old, ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as Grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile. Then two. Then ten. Then a hundred. Forage. When animals forage, they search through an area to find food. What can we do? Isatu asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out Omo soap. Marum grabs a bucket, and Incha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins, and they clip the washed bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isatu watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Wow, yes. Her sister shows Isatu the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isatu's fingers busy themselves. In, out, around. Jarajef, thank you. Isatu finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isatu pauses. She and Peggy have an idea. But will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One friend agrees to help. Then two. Then five. The women cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Nakaligi bi? asks grandmother. How is the work? Ndanka ndanka, answers Isa too. Slow. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty. But I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight, away from those who mock them, until a morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Issa too hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten. Then, recycled. When something is described as recycled, it has been used again or used in a different way. One woman lays the lassi coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend. Then two, then ten. Soon everyone wants one. Isa too fills her own purse with the lassi. She zips it shut, 
and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now. She tells herself, one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day it was. Author's Note I first traveled to the Gambia, West Africa, in 2003 as a volunteer teacher. I had an amazing experience, but something threatened to ruin my memory of it all. The heaps of garbage piled everywhere. The problem seemed too big to fix. Then a friend told me that in a rural village, a woman named Issa Tusise was doing something about it. My friend showed me a beautiful purse made from recycled plastic bags. And I vowed to meet Issa too. During my third stay in the Gambia in 2007, I finally connected with Isatu and visited her home in Najao. There, I interviewed many women and girls, including the original Gambian women who had begun the recycling project with Isatu a decade earlier. They shared past stories of dead livestock, strangled gardens, and malaria outbreaks linked to the trash. But they also shared new stories of healthier families, better income, and increased self-confidence. Although I wasn't able to include all the details about the women and their project in this book, I believe the story I've shaped captures their spirit and inspirational accomplishments. Today, Njiao is much cleaner, the goats are healthier, and the gardens grow better. Residents from nearby towns travel there to learn the craft of recycling. People from around the world continue to purchase the recycled plastic purses, and the women contribute some of their earnings toward an empowerment center, where community members enjoy free health and literacy classes, as well as learn about the dangers of burning plastic trash. In 2012, that center also became the home for the region's first public library. By the time you read this book, I hope that a copy of One Plastic Bag is shelved there and that it will be checked out once, then twice, then a hundred times. <laughs>